your, your, your nation station across the country. Ramadan is a blessed month that brings us close to Allah, brings us close to ourselves, brings us close to our families, brings us close to our communities. Allow us this Ramadan to take you for a special journey that will bring you as close as ever to your reality. Join Hatim Al Abdul Salam with engineer Muhammad Farooq in. in. Come close. Come close. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. All praise be to Allah, the Lord of the heavens and the earth. And peace and blessings be upon our beloved Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to your program, Come Close, with me, Hatim al-Abdul Salam. And joining me is my brother, Engineer Muhammad Farooq. Assalamu alaikum, Muhammad. Wa alaikum as-salam. How are you? I'm wonderful. What about you? We are at the uh, last day of the weekend. Yeah. Uh, sorry, the first day to start the weekend. Yeah. It's last a Thursday. Day, last work day. Last working day. Uh, yeah. It's a Thursday, and I'm th- I think everyone is looking forward to go back home and... Uh, relax with the family and enjoy the first weekend of Ramadan and enjoy the first weekend of Ramadan mm-hmm. and uh, Ramadan is a blessed season where you have lots of activities going on especially uh, in mosques you have lots of lectures uh, after the Asr prayer and and on Fridays you have the Friday ceremony and after the Friday ceremony you also have short normally a, sh- a short talk so today we're continuing with our show, which is a live show, and this show is repeated in the evening from 9 till 10, and is also repeated tomorrow from 5 till 6 in the morning. Mm-hmm. And um, we have uh, put together a set of topics that, w- that are new, that we, have, uh, we haven't discussed before in, uh, on the show. Um, so today uh, we have an important one, which is orphans. Uh, al Aitam and children overall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, basically, we were deciding should we keep it mercy towards children or uh, what topic should we select? And then, you know, we kind of uh, realized that uh, children, all of them need mercy, just like you and I need mercy, uh, both from the Creator God Almighty and also from the, His creation. Yes. Uh, children includes uh, those who have the luxury of their parents. And then children also include orphans. Uh, they might have one parent or they might have uh, lost both their parents. So before we get into it, uh, I felt that a good way to start the program would be to share some statistics. Mm-hmm. Uh, because a lot of us has never uh, met an orphan or made an effort to actually go and spend time with them. Okay. Yeah, they, they, most of the time people um, follow uh, charity organizations where they have dedicated uh, bank accounts. Yeah, they just give money. And, and they transfer the money. But and they say they think their job is done. So yes. you can see that in a way uh, there's a whole uh, humanity which is living in parallel to us and we're you know oblivious of each other's existence. And just looking at the statistics, first of all, uh, the forcefully displaced people in the world, the figure uh, given now is 70 million approximately. And that's the highest on record. You know, the other day we were talking about how racism is at an all-time high. So it seems like most of the vices globally are on an all-time high if you look at any statistics like gambling or drinking or, 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 or many, any of those, those things. Uh, out of these 70 million, about 25 million are refugees. And half of those are under the age of 18. And a lot of them, uh, during the process of migration, they lose their parents or they just split from them uh, and you know they never, never find them. Uh, another alarming statistic is that uh, the population of children is 2.2 billion globally, okay? And if we look at it, 210 million out of those are orphans and Asia has the top number of orphans, which is estimated to be about 60 million. So while the problem is exponentially growing, a lot of us uh, don't know about it. Or if we know about it, our mentality is that, oh, the 
charity organization is doing a wonderful work we'll take care of them they're taking care of them so let's just give them some money and you know uh, that's it yeah that's it do we, our job we and, have done our part yeah and get over with the guilt you know mm. now the thing is um, uh, when it comes to orphans i would like to uh, uh, explain uh, or share with you the experience of one of my good friends mm-hmm. He's in his uh, late 30s and uh, almost a month ago he lost his father. Mm-hmm. And when I spoke to him to pay my condolences, he said, I am really grieving for the loss of my father and you can't imagine what it feels like living without a father. Mm-hmm. And he's in his la- late 30s. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, um, Uh, my wife also lost uh, both her parents in the past few years and every time she tells me that uh, you don't know how it feels to lose your parents exactly now what about the little kid the little kids who were born not knowing their parents or mm-hmm. not having parents mm-hmm. and growing up seeing other children having parents and they don't have parents it's a feeling that not me or you muhammad or anyone else who has not gone through that cycle would know what it what it really feels and the pain they're going through and they can't express that pain they can't express that pain now the worst part is the when they have this this uh, the severe pain of not having parents and then in addition to that having the community or society judging them Mm-hmm. and labeling them and not caring about them exactly and uh, you see this very common when someone who comes to propose uh, for marriage uh, and he's an orphan or he wants uh, to have a position in the society they they look down on him because of not having parents and i'm talking about uh, especially the orphans who are out of wedlock mm-hmm. their parents are not known mm-hmm. Uh, nobody uh, knows about them so this is something that is serious and we need to open up and uh, speak up and 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 discuss this issue mm-hmm. i would like to remind our listeners who have just uh, joined us in that this is a live show with me hatim al abdus salam and engineer muhammad farooq and today we're talking about orphans al aytam and uh, the number to call is 2460205860205 Eight. Yeah. Okay, before we move a little bit on the uh, topic of orphans, the first thing that they need uh, from all of us is compassion or mercy. Yes. So, uh, like, um, you know, we discussed earlier a few minutes back that uh, we just uh, give money and we think that the job is done. But that's not the case. Uh, as an example, we need to keep in our mind that, you know, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim uh, sent Rahmatul Alameen. So when we uh, investigate Islam we see uh, a lot of mercy and compassion and different words used in different contexts to to express this emotion uh, you know uh, the uh, and one some of the the hadith that you that you look at it and the verses from Quran they're very strong like one of them is in uh, chapter 90 verse number 17 and it says and then being among those who believed and advised one another to patience and advised one another to compassion okay so we are supposed to advise each other this is not uh, by this uh, aya one can conclude that there will be times when we will tr- forget compassion or it will become less so we need to remind each other uh, the other thing is that prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him he said that allah has 100 portions of mercy because of one part there is com- Uh, compassion between the creation and 99 parts are reserved for the day of judgment i think we have a call muhammad our first call mm-hmm. assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam rahmatullahi wa barakatuh how are you brother i'm mazhar mahmud with you uh, fine how are you brother mazhar good alhamdulillah it's a good subject for the children just i want to i want to request you put the highlight like uh, some kids like because of this and this is understanding they get diverse and some ladies they don't want to even tell the who is the father of the child they'll take away and uh, they'll take care of the child but the child is not a orphan but even though being father is a probably father they don't he don't want to take care of the child that, and that's a very good point like a orphan 
That's a very good point. We, we, will, we, will highlight, we will highlight that, inshallah. Thank you very much for calling. Yeah, okay. And the, the other thing we, we see in, in, in the uh, current day and age, uh, in the old days, the orphans were accommodated in, in our homes. And there's a hadith of Prophet peace be upon him. He said, whoever has an orphan among the Muslims, uh, share of his food or drink, Allah will cause him to enter paradise unless he commits an unpardonable sin. In another hadith, it's mentioned, the best house among the Muslims is the house in which resides an orphan who is treated well. And the worst house among the Muslims is the house in which resides an orphan who is treated badly. So this hadith tells us that children used to be, uh, the orphans, they used to be with families, not in four walls confined in a compound called orphanage. Yes. And from this hadith, we also see an encouragement for us to, if you want to use the word, adapt orphans and bring them under our roof and bring them our, under our supervision. Yes, I think um, the the concept of mercy is very important when it comes to orphans. Mm -hmm. As we mentioned in the beginning, that they're going through a difficult time in their life, uh, growing up not having parents and uh, being brought up in an environment where they don't have that comfort of a male figure and mm -hmm. a mother figure um, to support them, to guide them, to have that feeling of love and compassionate. I know that uh, many um, support groups or charity organizations from time to time they go and visit the orphans uh, at the center and they uh, spend the special occasions like Eid and Ramadan with them. They provide them with clothing and, and so on. But I think uh, we can still um, uh, do, do more. Do more Exactly. Now we want to go deeper and look into the root problems, Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Why this increase in orphans? What is going on? What what seems to be the problem? And why do we still yani, continue seeing a lot of orphans? Exactly. I mean, uh, the number of orphans is increasing globally. Uh, yet most of us have never met an orphan or never set foot in an or orphanage. There are multiple factors. Obviously, they're directly, indirectly related to our lifestyles, our behaviors, the geopolitical changes, the, uh, uh, in some cases, economic changes. Uh, in in other cases, for example, if we look at the uh, there are a lot of uh, full fledged invasions going on globally, where mm. one nation is just invading another uh, nation using any pretext for war, and then the number of low intensity conflicts hotspots they are growing globally. If we look back ten years, the world was uh, safer and a more peaceful place than it is today. This is reality. I mean, this is not uh, somebody mm, there getting... There's a conflict zone everywhere you look. And new ones are popping up. Mm. It's not stopping. Uh, the other one is the related more to the uh, social aspect. That's the broken homes, the runaways, the out of wet wetlock children, um, you know... The and death, the natural death of the father. Yeah, death of the bread earner. And just the brother, mother who called, and he mentioned about, you know, a divorce happens, and the biological father is totally removed from the picture yes. uh, legally or otherwise and that child is forced to to live up and and grow up as an orphan in addition to that uh, the the last and not the least and of course there's many more is the poor parents yes uh, as an example as as a last resort out of desperation they might just abandon the child they might uh, leave them uh, in, some in of a, them even in a sell their children exactly exactly uh, put them in a shelter or leave them in a in a halfway home. Or among like among that. these categories that you have mentioned, Muhammad, some of them I think we can do something about them. Mm -hmm. We can we can help reduce the number of orphans uh, caused by 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 this. For example, uh, orphans out of wedlock. Mm -hmm. um, I think the way forward m w might be propagating uh, and educating people on the right channels of establishing a family which is through marriage exactly yeah and not going through a fornication or adultery mm -hmm. and even even if that happens then you do not correct a mistake by committing another, another mistake. mistake yeah don't yeah. compound the problem so do not neglect the child by trying to kill it so killing can be in in, in two forms like abortion mm -hmm. or dumping them in a in a place dumping the baby in a place where nobody can find them. Mm -hmm. This is a responsibility that has been given uh, to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And will be asked upon And will be 
asked about the soul that we are destroying. Mm-hmm. So if you have committed a, uh, adultery and uh, you have this baby now, please make sure you deliver it to the safe place. Exactly. Like hospitals or, or anywhere else where you think that people yeah. might find it. Yeah, and there are so many married couples, you know, who yes. can conceive. So, you know, they would be more than happy to take over this child as their own child. That, that That's the case. That's what I was trying to say, that mm-hmm. uh, there are a lot of couples out there that uh, would uh, die to have a baby. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, they, they just can't uh, uh, conceive a baby and they would love to take care of these babies. So, so, yeah, so the mercy for the child begins before he or she is even born. Yes. And, uh, you know, there's a very nice hadith. Uh, a man complained about his hard heart Yes. to uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he told him, if you wish for your heart to become soft, feed the poor and rub the head of an orphan yani take care of an orphan yes and you know this is very important because we are told that uh, to enter paradise we must have kalvisalim yes okay a soft heart a pure uh, clean heart so one of the ways is to get closer to the orphans and you know take care of their affairs and be responsible for them and in general i think um, not only for orphans also for children um, and I'm talking to the men, uh, especially, is, you know, there's nothing wrong with being soft, kind, compassionate, loving towards children. Mm-hmm. And when I say children, I don't mean your kids at home only. I mean all children. Exactly. Because all children are innocent mm-hmm. and pure. And they are a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just because the kid in front of you is not your son or daughter, it doesn't give you the right to be cruel, to be nasty, to be rude, Mm -hmm. or even to be physically violent with this child. Yeah, and and you don't think about it. There was a time when you and I were kids. Yes. And alhamdulillah, you know, our parents tried their best to to do whatever they could to provide us uh, an amazing living. And the other thing is, uh, to all the orphans out there, they never had an opportunity, neither did we, to select our parents or to select that we're going to have parents or not going to have parents. So when we talk about the uh, uh, grand scheme of things, that this life is a test, that this life is a test, so being an orphan is one of the quizzes, you can say. It is is a smaller form of test within life. It's not like God forbids that God hates you or he puts you in something that you can't handle. On the contrary, if we see what's mentioned in in Quran about the mercy towards orphans, uh, you know, in chapter 107, uh, if we look at verse 1 and 3, have you seen him who denies the deen? He is the one who harshly rebuffs the orphan and does not urge the feeding of the poor. So here, deen is equated to two simple things which we think are very simple and ordinary, Mm. and that's feeding the poor and taking care of the orphans. Just imagine how uh, deep and heavy this statement is, if, if only we understand. And also it's mentioned in uh, chapter 93, verse 9 and 10. So as for the orphans, do not oppress them. And as for beggars, do not berate them. And we know generally beggars, they ask for food and things of that nature. So again, the thing is that uh, everybody's need is food and everybody's need is uh, mercy or love or compassion. So we can extract uh, you know, these things from these two amazing ayahs. And they are targeting specifically orphans. Now, there are needs and rights mm-hmm. for the children in general, whether they are orphans or uh, our own children. Mm-hmm. And uh, most of the times we uh, we neglect these needs or rights that are there for the children. Mm-hmm. We think that providing a shelter and food and clothing and uh, security uh, we have done our part, well, and that's it. Yeah. But we come to the um, compassion, the quality time, the small talks that you have with your children, and uh, not only your children, especially for the volunteers who are visiting these orphanage. Um, these small talks that you give uh, the orphan, uh, the words of encouragement, the words of uh, fulfillment, the, the love and the compassion that you show them in five minutes, it's much, much greater than all the gifts in the world that you would give that child. Exactly. This formula works for your own children and for other children, whether they're orphan or, or you know, they have parents. 
So that's why sometimes we differentiate between the biological parent and the and the foster parent, so to speak. And uh, we need to remember one thing for all of us who are very big in buying stuff for for the children. Uh, it's okay. We have to support our families, like you said, the basics, because it's called sadaqa in Islam when we spend on our families. And, you know, being the uh, lead in the house, we it's, it's our job. Yes. It's their right to, to get this stuff from them. But above and beyond, whatever we do to show uh, affection in terms of buying them gadgets and gifts and things of that nature, trust me, once they grow up, they're not going to remember those gadgets because models change. What they're going to miss or remember are the experiences. And that's why we see... And this is quite tragic. There was a short video also on the internet that a lot of our kids are attached more to our maids than they are attached to us. These are these are the modern day orphans. Exactly. That because we have in our houses. Because they give them time. Yes. We give them yes. money, but they give them time. So basically, what we're trying to say is that our children uh, at home, they do have parents, but they don't see their parents. Mm -hmm. And even if they see their parents, their parents are very much busy with their smartphones and they don't give them attention exactly. and this is a dangerous thing because at this age the child needs us mm -hmm. needs a role model needs a loving uh, shoulder needs a compassionate parent and when they grow up and become teenagers or young adults we are going to need them and they won't have time for us exactly for, so, all, for all of us who are you know thumping our chest that we're going to create the next generation of leadership it's not going to happen like this. It's not going to happen. We're going to have all. to invest time, uh, compassion, mercy, empathy to to have the product that we desire. You know, they say you know, whatever you do is basically whatever you get. So now's the time if we wise up, uh, inshallah, down the line, we'll get good fruits. Later on, otherwise, they'll be just regret. One of the things that I urge uh, my brothers and sisters to try with their families, and uh, we have tried it in our family as well, is that when we have family gatherings, we allow room for the children to express themselves. So what we did is that all the parents sat down and we said, now it's the time for the children to speak up and tell us their opinion about their parents. Ouch. So every one of us as parents, we thought that, you know what, we're going to hear good things uh, from our kids. But we were shocked and surprised the amount of uh, uh, negative comments the amount that, of honesty that the, the amount of honesty <laughs> that we we heard from our children some of that some of them said uh, you don't spend much time with us some of them said that uh, you know you just shout and yell all the time and you don't you know you you do you don't negotiate it's just no some of them say that you know um, all your 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 speech is like instructions there is no conversation. It's all like instructions. Do this, don't do that. So we were really, you know, um, shocked to hear this. And it was an eye opener mm -hmm. that, you know, maybe we need to change our methods. Maybe we need to dedicate more time, quality time with our children. And there's nothing wrong to hear the advice or opinion of those who are younger than us. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. Exactly. Because no one is perfect. See, the problem is we're carrying a lot of cultural baggage. Uh, and a lot of the times when you talk to your friends, they'll say, well, this is how my dad was towards me. Mm. And, you know, reminds me of the story of Sayyidina Ibrahim al-Islam in Quran. Yes. So, you know, these things are not only, uh, you know, I saw my father do that when it comes to ideology or deen, but even in terms of practices, no matter how strange they might be or detrimental they might be, we still cling on to them. It's very difficult to change. It's very difficult to leave uh, what you have seen growing up. But this generation, Muhammad, whether we like it or not, is totally different than our generation. Um, they have access to global knowledge and exposure of you know uh, masses that we never had. To to address the question of the brother who has called Brother Mazhar, he mm -hmm. said that uh, some divorced women uh, conceal the identity of the father or they, they separate the child from the father. They don't even mention uh, the father. You see, the arguments that we have with our spouses that lead into divorce and this, this is a personal argument between the husband and the wife. The children have nothing to do with this. Yeah. It is not their fault. So do not, do not uh, punish the children by, um, how do you say this, by depriving them. Mm-hmm from 
their father. You cannot change the fact that this person is their biological father. And they have the right to know him. Yeah. They have the right to see him. They have the right to spend time with him. And they have the right to hear good things about their father mm -hmm. from you. Even if you have an argument, you have a dispute with their father, keep it to yourself. Do not draw an image, yeah. a bad image of the father in the mind of the children. See, I, I always prefer that, you know, it wasn't her, it was me. Instead of saying she was like that, she was, she did that, she did that. Uh, I think that's very low. And again, I'll take it back to the point that a lot of us, including our sisters, they're not very well versed about the teachings of Islam. As an example, uh, the father-son relationship goes all the way even after you die because he or she is eligible for inheritance okay so if you remove the father altogether from the picture how are the kids going to get inheritance down the line right? definitely so you're violating so many laws prescribed by god almighty that you don't even have any idea and you're okay with it because these things were not taught to you and you never made an effort to investigate like how to get married and what are the rights of the children and what you know if we get separated then what happens if we get divorced then what happens it's all trial and error and you know our advisors which are mostly as ignorant as we are if not more okay so someone needs to to break this vicious cycle and spare everybody a lot of uh, pain and misery there's um there's a huge difference between having children and raising children mm -hmm. because uh, everyone can have children very few it's can a take biological uh, yeah. it takes process, a man to raise children yeah. and uh, it, it happens when you get married you have children mm -hmm. but raising children is is something is an investment is yeah. something greater than than what we think or expect and most of the time we don't have a plan mm -hmm. for the orphans and we don't have a plan for our own children i told you it's trial and error okay let's try this did it work no okay change this let's try something else yeah, but normally, Muhammad, once if you're getting into a project, mm -hmm. any sort of project, you would do your homework, right? You're you supposed to do You would do a it. feasibility study. Yeah. You would draw a plan. You would have a blueprint for anything. See, then it. why then when it comes to the most important thing in our life, mm -hmm. which is our offsprings, which is the leaders of, the, of tomorrow, then it's trial and error. Yeah, let's take it one step ahead. You know, in, in Deen, it is even mentioned how to select the mother of your soon to be our potential child yes uh, most of us fail that test right then and there you know with the four categories which are mentioned you know we all know which one we select the beauty yeah yeah once you like someone khalas, you or, want to or, marry him. or if someone thinks he's very shorter than money <laughs> <laughs> Second okay. <to> Jerry. <laughs> yeah, there you go exactly <laughs> so somebody once told me a joke and mm. you know he said if your father is poor uh, then it's luck. If your father-in-law is poor, that's stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if we have this kind of mindset, uh, then of course we're going to have, uh, you know, results which are going to be painful. So I, I do agree with you that uh, if we are familiar even with the basic teachings of Islam, a lot of this pain can be spared. And, I, and I'll tell you one more thing. Whenever there is bickering in a family, the kids should not be exposed to it. And as an example, uh, as a last result, even if you decide to go separate ways, even after divorce, there should be amicable relationship for the sake of child. Uh, let's not damage them because tomorrow they're going to be adults like us. And then if they have seen us uh, behave this way and they feel this is the norm, most probably they'll repeat the same thing. I told you how difficult it is yes. for children to leave something that they've seen their mothers or fathers do. Okay, Muhammad, we'll continue with the discussion after the short break. Back to your show, come close with me, Hatem and Abdul Salam, and engineer Muhammad Farooq. And today we're talking about the topic of orphans and kids in general. This is a live show. You can call us on 2460205824602058. 2460205824602058. The show is going to be repeated in the evening from 9 till 10, inshallah. And uh, we stopped at uh, the responsibility of raising the children, their needs uh, and their rights. And you are about to say something. Yeah, about I was going to revisit mercy and uh, just look at, uh, you know, maybe one or two hadith and then compare them to what's happening in the world today and how bad uh, world needs a religion. You know, often people say, why do, I'm a nice person. Why do I need organized religion? Yes. So one of the hadith is that when Prophet peace be upon him uh, used peace to upon yeah, him. used to hear any uh, child cry during the prayer, he would shorten the prayer so the mother could finish the prayer and carry the child. 
and see what needs to be done to stop the crying. And you know, in in, in those days, uh, women used to pray behind uh, uh, the men. The men. And uh, there's another uh, hadith where Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, said that we were praying a sharp prayer with the uh, Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, when he prostrated, Al Hassan and Al Hussein, may Allah be pleased with them, would jump on his back. When he rises with his head, he picks them gently from the back and places them on the floor kindly. So when he returns to prostration, they return to what they do. And when he ended his prayer, he would put them on his thighs. So this uh, shows the level of love and compassion that Prophet peace be upon him had for 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 children. Peace be upon him. Yeah. And now we see, like, uh, in, in currently what statistics tell us, like the, the largest uh, global economy, I was reading about them, that uh, four children die per day. Subhanallah. Uh, and that's almost 1,500 uh, children uh, per year. And most of them, they die because of abuse or neglect. Okay. And 70% of these are less than three years old. Subhanallah. So I don't know what uh, other statistics can be more shocking or... Or, or more fear, uh, you know, fearing uh, than than the statistics. And then, <clears throat> on top of that, it's mentioned that almost three million abuse cases are registered per year. Now, just imagine the cases which are never registered. Okay, so this is an epidemic. As uh, as the human race, we're not only killing each other by invading each other's lands. We're killing our own children as well in the process. Yes, I think we will dedicate one show uh, for domestic violence. Inshallah, but let us take this uh, call first. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you guys? Fine. Wonderful. How are you, Brother Ahmed? I'm good, I'm good. Alhamdulillah. How's life treating you? It's good. wonderful. Not so bad, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. How's fasting in uh, okay. the United States? Alhamdulillah, it's beautiful, as, as always. Alhamdulillah. Fasting is always great. Alhamdulillah. You have always been a loyal listener, Ahmed, and always contributing with your wonderful thoughts. So what do you have uh, for us today? Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you for picking up very interesting and beneficial topics. Uh, today's topic is very uh, important. And uh, as, as always, you know, you always try to discuss things which are beneficial for the society and such as uh, people's life. So I'd yeah. like to uh, applaud you for that. Um, you, you, you were talking about um, the idea of selecting parents as a way to make sure that the parents have a beautiful and successful life. Yes. And I don't know if this is something that we can uh, incorporate or adopt from the West. You know, like in the West, they, they have something called marriage license, mm -hmm. where uh, people go through training before getting married and uh, so to make sure that kids in the future and even you know the, the couples have uh, a better understanding for what is to come you know from this kind of uh, endeavor um, I know that there are some kind of attempt uh, but they are commercial most of the time uh, in our societies uh, in general but we wanted to sort of create uh, charitable uh, programs, okay, where uh, maybe religious institutions could adopt. Uh, I've noticed here in the U.S., for example, churches usually tend to organize a lot of these programs for the community, where for free, okay, and so in order to make sure that the parents are ready for this kind of life. They talk about several topics related to how to you know, deal with your wife or your, with your partner, and also the same thing for, um, you know, like when you have kids, okay, uh, how to prepare your life um, and how to bring up your kids in a very good manner. So I don't know, do you think this is something I, visible? I think Ahmed, uh, sort of I, adopt Ahmed uh, I think this idea used to be there in the past within our families. So it wasn't something official, but it, it was among the elderly in the family. They would sit with the bride or the groom before uh, getting married and explain to them all these elements that you have mentioned. But now I know that the, the exact program is there run by the Ministry of Social Development. Uh, it's very structured. It's a full-fledged 
uh, course, but it is not imposed. It's so voluntary. It's yeah. voluntary. Yeah. Whoever wants to attend, they can attend, they can register and attend, but it is not like in the form of li a license or it is imposed for people b before getting married to attend uh, this uh, workshop. But uh, I, I know for sure that it does exist and uh, they, a lot of people have graduated from this workshop uh, recently. Yeah, I mean, you know, like I, I, I think, you know, such ideas, especially if they are, the, if they are, if they are beneficial and they can bring a lot of goodness, you know, to the community, maybe we should, you know, borrow from here and there. Yes. And we put our religious um, features and, and uh, foundation to it in order to suit the society. And I think maybe you could talk to <clears throat> more people who are in charge uh, to see if there is a way where we can expand the idea and become sort of uh, the, the trend where people can benefit and have a successful life, especially with this high rate of divorce that we're having in the society. Yes, yes absolutely. absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. This puts the yeah. odds in your favor. Anyway, thank you so much and keep up the good work. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank, thank you. you. And thanks for calling. Take care, Ahmed. Shukran. Yeah, I mean, you take care. Uh, I agree with Ahmed. In states, they're very big on matchmaking. Yes. And uh, also, you know, with the uh, latest surge in all sorts of, uh, you know, uh, diseases out there a lot of uh, the couples before they tie the knot they try to get uh, it's 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 not like mandatory but they try to get medical tests yes and it, you know some of them they even take like what they call them personality tests also to see if what are the chances that they will actually make it or not yes. so it's a good idea i think uh, with the modern day life um, <coughs> muhammad uh, it's, it's there's no harm in using different means and ways mm -hmm. as long as it's going to benefit people and it's going to uh, lead to a successful marriage which which will lead to raising uh, healthy kids uh, who are loving and compassionate and who are uh, will grow up to become g good believers yeah inshallah. I mean, you know inshallah people make uh, societies and societies uh, make nations and nations make civilization. So the smallest unit we have that we can focus on uh, is the, is our own household and you know, especially the children. Now, when it comes to some of the challenges uh, of orphans, uh, Muhammad, mm -hmm. you have uh, so many challenges. One of the first challenges is not having a suitable home mm -hmm. to live in. So they live in uh, the orphanage, uh, which is a center. Uh, that has uh, all the kids living together. So the element of having two parents is, is missing. Mm -hmm. in, in some few cases, you would find that uh, uh, some families at, uh, sponsor these orphans and they live with them in their mm -hmm. houses. Foster and they, homes. And, for, yeah. and, and they grow up uh, with these families. Mm -hmm. But and then uh, the challenge comes where they identify, oh sorry, they, they come to know that these are not my bi biological parents mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they go through mental stress they go through depression yeah uh, wanting to find out the reason why i have been neglected by my biological parents mm -hmm. or the 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 dilemma of going and looking and searching for my real parents biological parents mm -hmm. which leads to so many problems and I also wanted to mention the social aspect where people interfere with the lives of the orphans and ruin it for them. Yeah. And I would give you an example. I have a friend who got married and uh, after a year his wife got pregnant and wh while she was delivering she was bleeding continuously and she passed away. Mm -hmm. So he is a young man who is newly married uh, and he has this, this baby all alone so he wanted to get married again so that he would find someone to take care of this baby and he proposed more than 10 times and every single woman refused saying no i can't raise someone else's baby until he fi found a righteous woman who accepted to be his wife and they had other kids along this this child as well 20 years passed by this boy doesn't know that this woman is not my mother this is the only mother he knows mm -hmm. and their life was so comfortable one day my friend came back from work and he saw a different look on his son he was so distressed 
and he asked him what's wrong son why why do you look so uh, stressed and he said who is my mother mm-hmm. one of their relatives went and told him that you know what this lady she's not your mother there's no shortage of stupid and so, evil people in this world my friend he was really angry you know they had a very comfortable life easy going and everything and uh, suddenly this this relative comes and ruins everything so he decided he t- he he, to- he told his son get into the car with me and let's go for a ride and they went and reached the graveyard and he took him to the graveyard and he pointed to one of the grave and he said this is the woman who is your biological mother and the woman we left at home is your real mother mm. so it's your choice what do you want to do and the boy you know forgot about it and he continued life oh, but my point is those people who are not seeking for goodness mm-hmm. and interfere in other people's business right. you know they should fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in doing such things exactly let and us take uh, let yeah. us take this call han assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum wa alaikum salam how are you safiya alhamdulillah tamam how are you fine thank you how's everything It's nice to hear from you. Um uh This is a very good topic that you guys are um, speaking about. Sorry, I can't hear you very well. Just a second. Yes. Sophia, we don't have Hello? all day long. <laughs> yes. Yes, Sophia. Yes. Um Uh, give me a few seconds it's it seems that i cannot hear you very well okay we we can hear you sophia you just you just uh you just uh talk and we can hear you oh we lost the call yeah okay all right okay so like we were saying i mean here uh, what research tells us that the best way is to tell the children from an early age once they start developing consciousness uh, break it to them softly and let them get used to it instead of waiting till they hit their teens or even later on and then they hear it from someone else and not yes. from you i think you should have a plan gradually on how to yeah. tell them and seek the right time you know especially when they the, the kids are in their teenage uh period they are very sensitive mm-hmm. and very vulnerable so it's not it's not the right time to tell them so yeah. you have to choose the right time to tell them i think we have a call again assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam can you hear us now yes i can hear but very like Hi. Okay, no worries. Just 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 talk and we can hear you clearly. Okay. So, um uh before uh you you started talking about um children who are adopted and uh, what not you were talking about um you know, orphan kids and you were relating it to um you know, it's 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 something um we should uh look into and 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 what not the issue i i sometimes feel like you know um when we ha when there is orphan kids um and let's say um a family goes and visits the orphan and they're you know deciding if they want to adopt or not and and they go through the process and then when they adopt you know um there are issues like you know reminding the child that you know you should be grateful because i adopted you mm. or um uh you know whenever something goes wrong they 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 remind them you know i i took you from a from a place that you know i'm trying to get sawab min allah and you know you're not really helping me and and this is not what i you know i i pitched in for um other challenges i think when people who are um, adopted are it's very crucial for parents to know that you have to be very transparent from the beginning um you should start talking about adoption as something normal and it's okay not as, as it being a taboo mm. um and i think you should start introducing this word and making it like something like a normal word at probably the age of 3 so not down the line the kind of it's very difficult for uh, mm. for a person who's adopted to to um uh, uh you know it, it's it's an identity crisis i think 
and mm. to know that you you don't belong to this family, it it, it, it turns your world upside down. So if at least you learn from the very beginning, it it, it it makes the process easier. And even with the extended family and fa- and friends, it should be something uh, uh, natural. Like when the child um, is adopted, you should talk about it very openly because at the end of the day. If you keep it as a secret, it's not. It's, it, it just gets ugly. Hmm. What What might be the consequences, uh, Sophia, to conceal the the truth from the child of not knowing and then suddenly knowing? Yeah, yeah. Um, they become rebellious. They become. Um, they they it, it, it creates anger. You know, it it it, it creates. This trust, like, you know, I have trusted you with everything in my life, and I really thought you guys were my parents and my family. And so it, 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 it creates another uh, emotional uh, instability. So the, the, what is the, the, the way forward, uh, Sophia? What is the right approach uh, when it comes to this? And that's what I was saying. Like, you should be very transparent from the, the very beginning. Like, I'm, I'm a... I'm, I'm, I'm an adopted uh, child, and I use like I was adopted at three. And in our house, everything was very transparent from the very beginning. Um, Mom always talked about adoption, and you know she she only left the platform open for me to express my feelings. Now, of course, at the age of uh, being a teenager, you know you 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 you're ready. You're, you're trying to figure out who you are. You want to know about your biological parents and stuff. And the problem is that sometimes when biological parents give up their child, they have to sign a, uh, a form saying, you know, um, we will not um, reach out to, 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 to our child, we will uh, not look for them or whatever. And so sometimes by the age of a, a, a child at a certain age just wants to know why or just wants to know like medical information. So they would have to go back to the ministry and, and try and dig up some of these information. Sometimes uh, bio- biological parents are, uh, are contacted and say, you know, your biological child wants to get to know you. Is that okay or not okay? So there, there's these kind of challenges. Oh, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. Thank you so much, uh, Safiya, for sharing uh, your thoughts uh, on this on Thank this topic. You. And I think uh, the comments that you said are uh, very beneficial. So thank you so much, Sophia. Thank you. Have a good day. Take care. Assalamu alaikum. See, one of the things uh, I feel that parents, they hide the fact from their children is that maybe they don't want to get uncomfortable questions or maybe they feel in their heart that this will hurt the child and they just want the best for him or her and they just keep this as a secret or maybe... You know, and also the lack of experience, Muhammad, exactly. uh, in, in dealing with such uh, an issue is not easy because no one has experience to deal with uh, orphans. You exactly. know? So if it's your first time to take a child and, uh, as an orphan, then uh, you're experimenting. I, I don't think we have sport groups where you can actually go and say, hey guys, I'm planning to adapt a, a child. Can you tell I th- me how I it is? I think they, uh, they might have, but they're not very obvious. It's not... Uh, you have to uh, dig them very up. Very open. Yeah. You have to. It, it's it's within uh, families and so on. But uh, I think the comment that uh, Sophia said when parents they you know um, they uh, blame they, they remind they the remind child. the child that we have adopted you. That's the worst <coughs> level of humanity that you could get to. See, Hatim, anything in your life, if you will do it for the sake of Allah these thoughts will not even cross your mind. Yeah, but if you're trying to get something in return that, oh, when I get old, this son or daughter that I have adapted will take care of me and things don't work out, then these words will come out of your yes. mouth. Let us take the next call. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Hello. Can we ask them to call again? Yeah. Okay, so for the uh, adults out there, um, you know, I would like to share this hadith with everyone uh, where Prophet be upon him, he said, He who does not show mercy to our little ones or recognize the rights of our elders is not one of us. So we need to recognize here that 
uh, little ones could be our own biological yes. or they could be uh, you know stepchildren or they could be adapted or they could be children of other people like you said all children are innocent so it could be like they uh, their roots are from uh, you know uh, not yet muslim parents or things of that nature so we have to have mercy for all of them okay we have another call assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum tell them to turn down Sala- the radio assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam how are you I'm fine, thank you. Alhamdulillah. How are you? Fine, thank you. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> I actually stopped my car on the side just because uh, I the, the subject it actually it's something got to do with me as well. Um, uh, uh, first of all, Sophia uh, uh, share <clears throat> about uh, parents uh, let they should let their their children know if they're babies or you know. I know of course if they're babies they couldn't tell them since then until maybe they're three or four years old yes but my experience is I'm adopted and I didn't know until I was um, around 16 years old and uh, I found out in a really bad way <laughs> how, did, how did it feel um, I found out not by them telling me I found out by um, by school I was actually bullied in school and I was made fun of and um, I was called names and I went I always went home to my mom and I told her you know um, they always called me names and I don't know why they keep on telling me that uh, you're not my mom so it, it made me upset and um, it, it was very disturbing for me I couldn't even finish school so um, kind of. and it, it it actually it was really it was not not a pleasant experience but after finding out i was it took a while until i understood until um i understood that you know th- this is my mom and she'll be my mom for the rest of my life no matter what a mom is not uh, a mother is not the one who brought you to the world this, a mom a mother is the one who raises you uh, since you're small or since you're whatever age you are alhamdulillah um, so, I, I, I just yeah, wanted i just, I just wanted, wanted to give to give an advice for whoever is thinking of of adopting is always let your children know and speak to them and cuz it it could be uh, it it could go bad you know later on yes so, yeah. Thank thank you very much for sharing that, and I salute you for your bravery I'm to sorry, speak up. I, I cannot hear you. <laughs> it, uh, no worries. Uh, we're at the last minutes of the show, but thank you very much for calling. Thank you, thank you, and thank, thank you. you for Sophia's share also. That was nice. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Masalama. I think we are at the last minute of the show and thank you very much for the sister who called and for her bravery to speak up about this issue. If we all stand together and tackle these issues and speak about them in public, then we will make a difference in this world. Yes, to all the adults out there, as a final note, I would like to say that a soft heart is required to enter paradise and one of the ways to get it is by taking care of orphans, by getting close to them. And uh, after all, mercy comes out of a soft heart. And for all the orphans out there, in the beginning, I said that uh, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim sent Rahmatul Alameen. What we need to uh, pay attention to the fact is that out of his infinite mercy, he sent Rahmatul Alameen as an orphan. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Dear listeners, thank you very much for tuning in on our program. Clo- come close with me, Hatim Al-Absalam and Ijay Muhammad Farooq. See you, to- see you on Saturday, inshallah. inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.